It didn't go totally smoothly. A shortage of tank transporters delayed the challengers of the Queen's Royal Irish Hussars, and after nightfall there were some vehicles lost and convoys redirected. But the British 1st Armoured Division did succeed in moving itself at speed and at dead of night from a staging area to a position from which to engage the Iraqis, which of course is exactly what it expects to do. It was the most complicated exercise that, that, that I've ever been involved in. And what we were asking ourselves to do during the most extremely dark night as well was, was quite amazing. And, and, you know, it brings a smile to my face thinking about how we actually achieved it. And it, was, it, it exceeded my expectations, the results. By first light, the two brigades were dispersed across the battlefield and in a position to attack. In theory, of course, for this was still an exercise. And in the real battle ahead, the troops will be opposed. The question remaining, when that battle will be. It's still guesswork, and, and there's nobody's waiting to rush in there. I know the soldiers want to get on with it, but they're all quite content for this our bombardment, which is obviously immensely successful to go on, because there's going to be less of a problem for us when we do have to be used. Are you telling them days or weeks? Oh, I, I, I'm, I think that's a very difficult question, and they read the papers as well as much as I do, and I just feel that, you know, there's a bit of time to go yet. The British are now as ready as they're going to be, but this is not an alliance of entirely equal partners, and the decision when to go is mainly American. This is Martin Bell with 7th Armoured Brigade for the British television news pool. Some of which were on the roofs of civilian buildings. Allied planes, like the Tornado, continue to face a barrage of anti-aircraft fire as they fly over enemy territory. As this film shows, the air can be peppered with exploding shells, which appear here as white flashes on the screen. The planes had until now mounted an effective campaign against such gun positions, but now they're finding the anti-aircraft artillery has been transferred to residential areas, often on top of civilian buildings, which they're told not to attack. American military sources are saying that remains the policy for the present, though if planes are lost, it could change. For the moment, the Allied pilots maintain air supremacy. The latest illustration, four Iraqi planes shot down by Americans as they fled towards Iran. There are reports of a new emphasis in the B-52 attacks, which have until now been aimed primarily at the Republican Guard. One report says they've now switched attention to tanks on the front line. The main debate here continues to be over how much damage has actually been done by all that bombing and shelling. The French, for instance, believe that thousands of Republican guards have already been killed. The British and the Americans refuse to get involved in body counts like that. As one senior military source said today, all such estimates are at least 50% guesswork. Peter Allen, ITN, Riyadh. Censorship. Gun emplacements are visible on Baghdad rooftops. This daylight air attack brought down the main TV transmission tower while people raced for cover. In the town of Najaf, mourners were called to the funerals of those killed in bombing raids. The Iraqis say these people in the local hospital are civilian casualties of Allied bombing. Meanwhile, the Baghdad oil refinery is still burning after seven days. Iraqi censorship. Correspondents in Iraq are restricted to areas approved by the Iraqi authorities. The systematic destruction of Iraq's bridges by Allied airstrikes is aimed at cutting off Saddam Hussein's army in the south, a tactic which cannot fail but hurt civilians and military alike. Here is the proof that vital road links over rivers are in ruins. The Euphrates divides the provincial capital of Nasriya and its one million inhabitants in half. A shaky one-lane footbridge built on floats is the city's last remaining link. Vehicles are forced to move slowly, but pedestrians scurry across, fearing that a distant rumble signals another attack. Nasser Bridge was one of three city crossings. Iraqi officials say four warplanes fired missiles and rockets to destroy it on Monday afternoon. This is just one of many road bridges to have been destroyed by the Allied bombers during the past few days. The net result of this strategy is to disrupt and destroy the supply lines for the Iraqi army occupying Kuwait. This was the result of a near miss on the Baghdad to Basra expressway over the river Euphrates in the same city. Extensive civilian damage. Iraqi families whose homes are close to important road and river bridges are now reportedly moving away. 
we were rushed into Nazria's Saddam Hospital and got caught by another raid. The bombs were falling on unspecified targets nearby. Of all the hospitals I've seen so far, Nazria's casualty room and wards were the bloodiest. The hospital director claimed Monday's attack on Nasser Bridge caused heavy casualties because it happened at 3 p.m. when it was crowded. How many people have died? One day they died 47. One day for the bridge. Nazria is a five-hour drive from the Iraqi capital. Moving by night is the worst possible time. It was not of our choosing. Baghdad and its outskirts were again under heavy attack. At one stage, the bombardment and Iraqi ground fire was all around our route in. There is no letter in the Allied bombing campaign. Brent Sadler, ITN, Baghdad.